severe weather like this, does the high number of weather alerts actually make you less likely to pay attention and protect yourself? Today we're taking a close look at that. You see them on TV, on your phone, and on the internet. Alerts designed to keep you safe during the threat of severe weather. Looking at small loan, you'll find dozens of applications designed to give you the latest information, weather information, right at the palm of your hand. Managers at U.S. Cellular say weather apps are extremely popular with customers. U.S. Cellular customers, I found that they really enjoy it and are able to download apps for severe weather. Of course, you can get information about breaking weather, and customers can have it on the go. It's very convenient, and you always have access to the information. So in the case of severe weather, you'd have the information handy. In fact, managers at U.S. Cellular say a recent survey found 32% of women use their smartphones as their main source of severe weather information over their computer. So weather updates are definitely something lots of people are after, but with so many different sources, does emergency information get lost in transmission? George Matthews with the National Weather Service in Morristown says if you are getting an application that is going to send alerts, you definitely want to be highly selective and check your settings. I mean, just do some research and, and try to get something that's flexible and that's going to be alerting you to, uh, like, warnings. Uh, see if it's kind of programmable to where you're not getting alerts for the whole state of Tennessee. Or then, and the uh, warehouse is working very quickly. But, uh, like, if you can just select a couple of counties or something and only select it for, like, tornado warnings, flash flood warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, and only the stuff that is really going to be a, a threat to you, um, that would be helpful so that it's, so that it's not... Uh, getting tiresome about uh, things that don't apply to you at all. Matthew adds too many alerts can lead to people simply ignoring them altogether. Well, for more on the topic, we're joined by Todd Howell along with Knox County Emergency Management Director Alan Lawson. Todd, thank you so much. We're going to get you back to the weather center yeah. in just a moment. <laughs> Alan, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. I want you two to weigh in. Todd, is there really such a thing as being too informed? I don't think so, but George Matthews just made a very good point. You don't want oversaturation of alerts to sensitize you uh, to the actual uh, warned information. You want to uh, basically you can choose and select your county. The NOAA Weather Radio is one of the best tools. You can also do this with your weather app. We have our smartphones, Mike and Kirsten and I all do, where you can select uh, you know just the counties. We have all of our counties, of course, but you can select specific counties that you want to have you alerted for. So yours, and I recommend the upstream counties. So your county and a few other ones, if you just want to be alert, alerted for those, that will keep you informed. That way, you're not being oversaturated with too much weather information. But all the alerts are issued to keep you informed, and you need to heed them. A watch is a broad area, just means be on the lookout. Nothing right now, but be prepared to take cover if something happens. A warning means your area is being affected, and you need to take cover immediately. So any weather information can be very useful, but you want to be selective about how much you know counties you're sele selecting on your app or your uh, computer. I, I would encourage you to be very selective for your counties, and uh, that way you don't get to desensitized to all the weather information. But all the weather information that out th is out there can be very useful and you need to uh, heed the warnings. That's the key. Yeah. Even if it's not for your affected area, there's something out there that you need to pay attention to and uh, stay up to date. So it's very good to have it on your phone, to be mobile with it. That way, no matter whether, where you are, you're getting that severe weather information. You've been doing this a long time, Todd. How do you decide personally when to come on the air, when to uh, go on social media and alert? and when to hold off. Okay. Well, no matter what, if it's for a county that's in our warning area, we immediately give you that information. It's the crawl on the bottom of the screen. Now, not all storms are alike. If we feel like it's a particularly damaging or threatening storm, we'll come on air and we'll do a live cut-in. Depending on how damaging or how much of a threat that storm is, that determines how long we stay on air. Today, we're doing continuous coverage because there's threat and a moderate risk for damaging winds and tornadoes, flooding, and even some hail. It's a higher risk than normal. So it basically, it directly matches up with the threat. The higher the threat, the longer we'll stay on air to give you that information. Yeah. So now, it pretty much matches up there. Alan, with emergency management, is this something you're concerned about? I mean, you want people to take warnings when needed. Do people tend to be overly cautious, or do they just pass off some of the warnings and alerts? Do you all worry about that? Well, like that? we do worry about it. It's just human nature to uh, to think that you no know, things can't happen to me, or it'll be all right, or to don't not take a warning seriously. But when there is a warning that 
applies to you directly, it is very important to, to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Todd, you mentioned just a moment ago, people need to be specific when they're watching uh, and, and applying for these applications. They need right. to, to select their county, but also the counties uh, maybe to the, the west of them, whether typically moves west to east in our situation. Right. This afternoon, most of the threats were north of uh, us here in Knox County, but were affecting people in our viewing area. Right. When we have different weather and different parts of our viewing area, how do you handle that? You know, we had alerts, uh, warnings in, in northern in Kentucky, northern right. Tennessee, but not in east Tennessee. How right. do you deal with that? Well, and you know, and we'll kind of address this to our Knox County or, or Central Valley viewers. That's where most of the population is. A lot of folks, a lot of times, be it uh, severe weather, winter weather, or wait a minute, you know, in Knoxville, the sun's shining, or I don't see damaging winds here, but we do, we know there's somewhere else, but it's not affecting me. Well, keep in mind, we do serve a large viewing area. That includes the Cumberland Plateau, Southeast Kentucky, Southwest Virginia, including the no greater Knoxville area. Of course, most people live in the Knoxville area, and so we're always trying to keep that in mind. But we have to cover. When storms move into the outside of the viewing area, we, uh, every, every viewer is exactly alike. So we want to make sure that we're covering our viewers equally, no matter where that storm is. Now, obviously, we also uh, to see that as a greater impact. The more people that it's impacted, uh, naturally, common sense says, you know, we're going to spend probably extra time and even more time committing our resources mm -hmm. and devoting to covering storms that do affect Knox and surrounding counties because more people are impacted. So it pretty much matches up. Mm -hmm. But whenever there's severe weather, whether it's affecting one person or a million people, we're going to get on and give that proper information because that's uh, we feel like that's the right thing to do. You mentioned the counties to be affected. If I'm in Knox County and you can program your Norway weather radio or you select it on your app, I would definitely have Knox, uh, Anderson, mm -hmm. Roan, Loudon, and probably just to be on the safe side, Union or Blunt, but particularly uh, Anderson, Roan, and Loudon. Okay. Uh, upstream. Now, sometimes the weather can come up from Blunt County and come down from Union, but you know, and, and of course your immediate county, probably your immediate county, and look to your west, northwest, and southwest for adjacent counties, just to be on the safe side. Again, it makes sense. Don't take them for granted, though. If there's tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, there is bad weather in the area. Take those warnings uh, seriously. You mentioned the NOAA apps on smartphones. Alan, you and I were just talking about an app that's available for droid phones, and it's called Ready Tennessee. And you say this is a place to get a lot of information in one particular location. It is. It's. Um not only uh, warning information, but there is some preparedness information. There's a quick checklist of what to have for an emergency kit. There's a, a paragraph or two about different um, hazards, like what to do in case of tornado or fire or flood, and just go on down the list. And so it is lot of county specific, even includes shelters, right? It sh will show if there's a Red Cross shelter open, it will indicate that and will show the address of it. Um, it will show the, the TDOT cameras, so you can see that if you want to on it. So there's a lot of information. And that app, again, is called Ready Tennessee, and it is available for Droid users. Alan Law, the Knox County Emergency Management um, Organization, we appreciate you being here. And Todd, thank you so much uh, for weighing in on this. And we'll let you get back to the Weather Center for more updates. Yeah, we've got some warnings right <laughs> now, as Mike and Kirsten were telling you about some new warnings. So I'll head on back over there. Please do so, and we'll bring you the latest on those warnings.